Hi, I'm Scott Patterson, Director of Marketing here at B Incorporated, home of the BOS. We're here in our headquarters in Menlo Park, California, just north of the Stanford campus. We're glad you could spend some time with us today. We'll spend most of today taking a look at the B operating system itself and the technologies within it that make it so great at handling the real-time manipulation of high bandwidth digital media on low-cost personal computers. Before we jump into the OS itself, there's a couple of people we'd like you to meet, so why don't you follow me? Hello, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, let me uh, try and explain what we are trying to accomplish with the BOS. First, we set out to start from a blank slate. This frees us from all the layers and layers of uh, bug fixes and improvements that you uh, see as sediments on uh, older operating system platforms and make them uh, slower, uh, harder to debug, and uh, uh, really make it make it uh, difficult to uh, make the best of uh, new audio and video technology, which is what we are concentrating on. With the BOS, we are trying to create the ideal platform for the development of a new breed of new digital media applications. You've seen the success of uh, Linux, so if you want a soundbite to, to, to summarize what we are trying to accomplish, we are trying to become the Linux of audio and video applications. So now, I hope you'll enjoy the demo, and uh, the next person to, uh, to explain uh, what we're doing will be Frank Bozeman, our uh, Vice President of uh, Developer Relations. You're about to see a demonstration of the BOS, the operating system we've built from the ground up to be the best in the world for people working with today's rich media, audio, video, and images. If you're considering developing software for the BOS, then what I hope you see is the opportunity to build groundbreaking applications for a platform where the playing field is truly level. I also hope you see a focused market of customers seeking software that goes well beyond the functionality possible with today's operating systems. If the demonstration you're about to see piques your interest, then please do check out our website to learn more about the variety of programs we have in place to help you develop your products and bring them to market. So, when you're ready to edit media far more efficiently than you may have thought possible, or when you're ready to do some development on a system that makes programming fun again, then come spend a few hours with the BOS. Of course, if one day you decide not to go back again, we won't complain. Thanks for your time, and enjoy the demonstration. We're ready to take a look at the BOS. But before we jump right in, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the computer so you can gauge the performance that you see. This computer has 64 megabytes of RAM, a 3 gigabyte hard drive, and two HOPOG video capture cards. These are about $70 cards that you can purchase at your local computer store, and we're using them to capture uncompressed video to play with inside of the operating system. Everything you see on the screen will be done in software. There's no additional accelerated hardware. The only unique thing about this computer is the processor, rather the number of processors. We're utilizing a dual Pentium 2 system running at 266 megahertz. Although we'll utilize both processors for most of the demo, at times we'll turn one off so you can gauge how the system runs on a uniprocessor machine. OK, let's get started. We haven't made any radical user interface changes in the BOS. The idea was to make the learning curve of the BOS as gentle as possible. So there's a familiar concept of disks, folders, which you double click on, and files and folders inside of those. Everything inside of the BOS is live. So as I manipulate this window, you have live updating, even as I open and close the size of the window. There's context sensitive menus, so if I wanted to move this item somewhere else on the disk, I simply navigate down the hierarchical file system and place it where I want it.
This utility up in the corner is called the desk bar. It does a number of things. The first and most obvious is it keeps a list of your currently active applications. If I run the clock application, you'll see it's listed in the desk bar. I can customize the look and feel of the desk bar, placing it on almost any fringe of the screen. I can compress it, place it along the top of the screen, in any corner, along the bottom, and I'll leave it up here in this corner, which is where I'm used to using it. One thing we strive for in the BOS is a very responsive user interface. The way I'll demonstrate this is by bringing up a number of items on the screen at the same time. First, I'll launch a sound. This is a 16-bit stereo audio file being played at 44.1 kilohertz off the hard drive. Even though we're playing this audio file, I can move windows around the screen, access menus, launch applications, I'll launch our CPU monitor, as well as our Mandelbrot. I can iterate in real time down on the Mandelbrot and even bring up a movie. The first thing you'll notice as I move this movie around the screen is that nothing stops processing. The movie continues to play all of its frames. The audio continues to play without any glitches. You can have up to nine virtual workspaces inside the BOS. I'll bring up the workspaces preference panel. And the best way for me to really demonstrate this is also to bring up the screen preferences panel. Here I'm working in a workspace in thousands of colors, and if I switch to workspace two and then drag the screen preferences panel across, you'll notice this workspace is in 256 colors. And if I go to the third workspace and drag across again, we're working in millions of colors. This is a great way to organize how you work with your applications, perhaps productivity in one window, video editing in another. It's also a great way to preview graphics in different color depths. I'll bring up a graphic. And you can see what it looks like in millions of colors. And if I simply switch to the 256 color workspace and drag that graphic across, you can see what it looks like on an 8-bit machine across the internet. The BOS is a fully symmetric multi-processing operating system. That means that the entire OS, from kernel to applications, can take advantage of more than one processor in a system. In fact, the BOS has been run on systems with up to eight processors. This means as you go from one to two processors, you get a nearly 100% increase in performance. This application that I'll show you, Cinema 4D, takes advantage of the symmetric multiprocessing in the BOS. I'll load up an image. And I'll also load up our CPU monitor so you can see the level of activity on each of the CPUs. The more green you see on each bar, the more that particular processor is being utilized. I'll go ahead and select Render. The threads in this application are set to have a priority such that they soak up whatever excess CPU is available, and that's why you see both processors go to work on the problem. Let me turn off a processor for a minute and go ahead and re-render this image. What you'll notice as I turn the processor on and off, is the rendering speeds up and slows down. The BOS dynamically handles allocating threads to whatever the next available processor is. Today your thread might run on processor 1, and tomorrow it'll run on processor 4. The BOS implements protected memory. Applications and even the operating system processes themselves all run in their own protected memory address space. This means no single misbehaving application can take down the operating system or any other application. We've intentionally crashed an application inside the B operating system. What you see on screen is the resulting error message. Although this application is crashed, we can still